This video is sponsored by Lark. More on them later. For the past two years, I've been drinking nothing but water that I've made right here on my roof using these two machines. They're entirely self-powered and all they do is take in air from the side, use the sunlight, extract the humidity to generate pure H2O. But the question is, is this sustainable? Can this actually solve the drought or did I get scammed? First though, let's see how they actually work. There's three sections to the panel itself. On the two sides, you have the hydro panels, which collect the water, and the middle, you have the solar panel, which powers the entire device, making it completely off-grid. Now, these fans can be kind of loud and annoying for your neighbors, but in the app, there is a way to turn them on quiet mode, which will actually reduce the fan noise overall, but also reduce the amount of water that it generates per day. I have it set up on a schedule though, so when no one's home, they're running full blast, and then on the weekends or at nights, they're running in quiet mode. So this is it running normally, and now if I do quiet mode, and now it's in quiet mode. So I would say it's maybe about 50% quieter than what it is. You don't really notice it if you're sitting out in the yard or nearby at all in quiet mode. Normal mode, when both of them are going, it can be kind of annoying. So the way it works is they are daisy chained together. The back one leads into the front one. They both have those water tanks there, which are 30 liters each, giving me 60 liters total or about 16 gallons. And the water flows through this little black pipe, which is kind of protected by PVC pipe, which is then running all the way over my roof, down on the side of my house, into my kitchen, into a little water spigot. So the water just comes out of a normal spigot like this in my kitchen and you're good to go. The real challenge with this thing though is the cost. So the system on my roof, which is two panels, cost me $6,000 total. There's a 15 year warranty, which breaks down to $400 per year. Add in the $100 per year maintenance, and I'm paying about $500 a year for the water that it generates. Now over the past two years, they've generated seven and a half liters of water per day. A normal size water bottle is half a liter. So that's about 15 water bottles every single day that those generate. Multiply that times a full year, 365 days, and we're just shy of 5,500 water bottles that I get from these systems. So divide the $500 that we're paying per year with the 5,500 water bottles we're generating, and we're paying about nine cents per water bottle. Now, if you compare that to Fiji water, what you end up looking at is around 94 cents per bottle. And that's not even this kind of bottle, that's the smaller one version of this that you can get from Amazon. So that's about 10 times or more than 10 times as much for Fiji water versus the water I'm getting here. And if you're a smart shopper, you go to Costco and you buy pallets of water bottles, and there you're even paying about 23 cents per bottle. So still more than double than what I'm paying for this water on my roof and I don't have to go to the store to get it. It's amazing that other YouTubers out there can't do this basic math when they talk about this product. But let's just actually run through a test and see how these two compare and then show how it is compared to tap water as well. This is the water test here, which is the top rated one on Amazon, or it's at least the one that Amazon told me I should buy. It has 17 different things it tests for, 17 different parameters, and it only takes a couple seconds. So let's just see how these stack up. We've got the Fiji water, we've got the source hydro panel water, and then this is just tap water here. We're gonna dip these little strips in there for two seconds, and then what we're gonna do is compare them. Really what I'm looking for is pH, lead, iron, any of the other challenges or things that you don't want in your water that'll either affect taste or could actually be harmful. So here goes. First, I have to, I guess, open the Fiji water. Now I'm gonna take my strip, careful not to touch it, and dip it in there for two seconds, it says. Swirl it around, pull it out, excess water. Okay, so that is the Fiji water. There's your source hydro panel water. There's actually quite a bit of difference there. Look at that, look at that one in the blue. These guys are all pretty similar. And then all pretty similar. Then the very top one is green versus yellow. That's interesting. And there you have your tap water. So we have our Fiji water first, our source hydro panel water, and then our regular tap water from San Diego. 
I don't know what I'm actually looking for here, but let's just line it up and see. Starting with the Fiji water here, and I'll be careful not to touch it. We want to line it up correctly. And so the very top, you can see the pH right around seven, pretty good. The hardness, actually very hard. Hydrogen sulfate, none. Iron, none. Manganese, none. Chlorine, none. Nitrate, none. Nitrate, none. And then total alkalinity within an acceptable range, but kind of high. I mean, that's kind of common. I think water, bottled water, they, they often want the alkalinity to be kind of high. So there you go, that's your Fiji water. Now, let's try our source water. I'm actually very curious about this because I've been drinking it. Okay, so here is your source water. So pH is on the extremely low side, barely within acceptable range. The hardness, kind of right in the middle, lead, none, manganese, none, chlorine, none, Mercury, none. Nitrate, nothing, nothing, nothing. Sulfates, zero. Zinc, zero. Sodium chloride, zero. And then total alkalinity is also zero. So really, the main difference here is the pH on this is quite a bit lower, still kind of within an acceptable range right there, but on the lower side. And there is no, basically no alkalinity in here at all compared to the Fiji water. But in terms of cleanliness and purity, passing in every category. Now let's look at the tap water, and I am very afraid to see what, what San Diego has in store for us here. Okay, pH, kind of right in the middle, that's good. Hardness, holy cow, <laughs> very hard. A uh, little bit of copper maybe. Everything pretty much nothing here. Fluoride, basically nothing. And alkalinity, it's actually it's within the, the range, but, but pretty high on it. So really, that's the main difference. So the San Diego water is actually not terrible here. It's pretty similar to the Fiji water. The main difference being the alkalinity between all three of these. So the water's clean, as you saw. A little low on the pH on the hydro panel water, but still acceptable and actually good results all the way around. But the fact remains that this is still an expensive system to install at your house just to get clean water. And that begs the question, is there a cheaper solution out there? Well, of course there is. And that's where today's sponsor comes into play. This is Lark. Lark is a revolutionary way to get pure water in your home, kind of no matter what the original quality of the water is. Traditional water pitchers on the market today mostly just focus on improving the taste of the water. They don't really remove things like lead or any of the other seriously harmful stuff. And that's where Lark is different. In the US, water safety standards haven't been updated in over 50 years, and 27 million Americans are served water each day that violates the Safe Drinking Water Act. There's contaminants that emerge from water mains and pipes and aging homes that are never reported in the municipal water quality reports. And in fact, a 2012 to 2014 study found that nearly 21,000 municipalities across the U.S. issued boil water advisories for microbial contamination. Now, while traditional pitchers focus on improving taste, they only trap and collect pollutants, making the filter itself a source of contamination. In just about two weeks, your pitcher is gonna be riddled with germs. The Lark pitcher goes beyond filtration with its unique two-step filtration and purification. Step one is better filtration. They have these innovative plant-based filters which remove pollutants like lead and chlorine to deliver the best tasting water without compromising efficacy. And then they go beyond that with their PureVis technology which helps prevent biocontaminant growth inside of your pitcher. And so Lark would be a great alternative for someone who these water panels really don't make sense based on their situation. But who it does make sense for are people that don't have water that they can filter with something like a water bottle like Lark or an under sink water filtration system. Now, a lot of these people are indigenous and that is where Source is trying to deploy their system as more of a community scale solution. They have projects in Colombia, in Australia, and here in the US in Navajo Nation. So this is where you don't have access to any water, building infrastructure, not just the water treatment plant, but the electricity grid, the roads, all the other things to make a water treatment plant work, where the cost of something like that is so astronomical, you can spend a very small portion of that money, drop in 50 of these in a field in the middle of basically nowhere, and you have drinking water for a sizable community. That is where I think Source really shines. As someone that's been living with them for two years, I love that I have 
access to pure, clean drinking water, regardless of what happens in my city or my state with a drought or any other contaminants that might happen. But I don't really think it's practical if you have running water already. They're loud, they're expensive, and there are just cheaper and better solutions out there for you. But that doesn't mean that it's not right for other communities. I wanna know what you guys think down below. And if you wanna see the install of this, check out this video over here. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.